I feel bad if I don't spend at least $150,000 and tore up race cars. David, only you'd think about stuff like that. What the hell do you think I was mad about? Are you paying attention? He's a new guy, isn't he? Okay, bud. Well, I'm going to give you some Tony Media training today here. I mean, you've been doing a great job. You're doing fantastic, but I want you to be able to have a little bit more fun and, you know, do what you got to do sometimes. Sometimes you got to set them straight. So All right, we're going to watch a bunch of film here and we're going to work through this. All right, let's do it. This is the third straight race. There's been no wreck. I mean, does that amaze you? Have you ever seen anything like that? David, only you'd think about stuff like that. I don't, I don't know about what you think of during the race, but I try to figure out how to win the race and make my car go fast. I don't sit there and think of that petty crap that you think of. That's Fox. Glad what? to see you're back to form. So did you see what he just said? Yeah. It's a that, third straight race without a wreck. That yeah. was his media question. Yeah, that's a pretty bad question. That's a bad lie. question. That's a bad question. Great so answer, what, though. So what do you do when, when you get a bad question? You give a great answer like that. You give them a Really great bad answer. Yeah, that was good. Did you, know that, on it. did you know that Dale Jr. was dying laughing? Absolutely. <laughs> I was trying to actually get him to laugh, laugh, and he just never did. That, that was a good one. What was your mood that day, you think? Uh, well, I think we finished in the top three, so why we had to go to the media center. But I, uh, I, I it was, it was one of those weekends we didn't, we didn't nail it. Yeah. We, we got where we needed to be, but it, we had to do it the hard way. Yeah, I like, I like that answer. That was a good one. Well, Tony, what angered you at the end of the race? What did you take issue with? What the hell do you think I was mad about? Dumb little s runs us clear down to the infield. He wants to s about everybody else, and he's the one that drives like a little I'm going to bust his ass. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. So there. Guy asked legitimate questions. Yeah. He had to ask the tough questions. Gave him the answer. Or, and was polite about it at the end. He was even. polite at the end, and I yeah. felt like I needed to extend the same courtesy. Yeah, I, th I thought there's nothing wrong there. I think that's one of those perfect interviews, truthfully. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely uh, were calling a spade a spade that day. Yeah, I, I remember watching that race and I remember watching that interview. But it's a, that was one where got the message across. Yeah, I think he knew not to run you down to the apron anymore. Yeah, he never ran me down to the apron yeah. again. Yeah, so you got your point across. Maybe the fans have turned off a little bit. <sighs> now, do you feel like it's too safe out there? That maybe fans like the danger a little bit. That's, okay. That was his view. Well, I could say that the media center is getting boring in here and it's too safe because you guys got four legs on your chairs. So we can start sawing legs off. What do you think about that? You like that idea? Are you paying attention? What do you think? I'm more interested in what you think. Well, well I'm interested in what you're thinking now. This was a good one. I don't think fans that watch NASCAR want to watch their drivers get hurt. Right here. Hey, just for the Chris. record, anybody that you can just log that answer for the rest of my life when it comes to that question, that's going to be my, that will be my response for that for the rest of my life. So we, we'll save that. So again, somebody asking about. Yeah, that I, that driver is not wrecking. And yeah, that question. I, yeah, I mean, I'm all about like the excitement side of it, but I don't know why anybody would see anybody get hurt necessarily. So here's the great, here, here's where that was coming from. So that's, that's a reporter from the New York Times, comes to two, maybe three races a year, and that was the best question she could come up with. I, I like how you turned it back on them too. Yeah, but it's like, do you feel like if you sat there with three legs on your chair, you'd, that it would make it more exciting for all of us? Damn sure for me it would. <laughs> Well, we have a, a great new partner with Mahindra, uh, obviously, and, and super excited. It gives me the opportunity to uh, to get behind the wheel again of a tractor. <laughs> Suspenseful. <laughs> Everybody's fingertips were waiting to click on the keyboards, and then we crushed our hopes. And yeah. I, you can definitely see the whole room kind of like sit up when you said <laughs> that, I remember. So obviously it's a big moment, you know, with Mahindra and our announcement and everything, but you, you can make these people laugh, and when you when you give them a clip like that, and you say something that gets them giggling and carrying on, they that's the things that make your personality shine and show through, and and that's the things that they'll they'll grab onto and hold onto for a long time. Yeah, I agree. I think you definitely got to show your personality and take you know you got to be serious at all the time, but you still got to take some things lightly and joke around a little bit. That, so they got to have fun. With it. Yeah, for sure. Yep. So you think 10 or 15 years down the road, we're watching your video clips teaching somebody else? <laughs> Yeah. How are you going to feel about that? Yeah, I mean, maybe. Uh, I will say that 
it's easy to do like when especially you're caught up in like the competition i feel like it's a lot easier to do it like as soon as you're out of the car like the the deal of fontana right like you're fired up you just got out of the car the media center you can like throw jabs a little bit easier but i do think that i'm sure at some point i've probably already said something stupid in the past already but it's it's easy to do like you're hot you're mad after a race somebody got into you and ruined your day it's easy to say something that's going to live on forever, but we it, are it is from, funny looking back on it. We are from Southern Indiana. Yeah. We do say stupid things <laughs> yeah. occasionally. Yeah, for sure. So it's been fun, obviously, watching this and talking about you busting people's ass. But uh, in all seriousness, what like what are three tips you think really help, like as far as your, like showing your personality in the media? And it's more than just driving the race car. Obviously, but this is a huge part of the job too. So what would be like three things that you think are really important when it comes to that? I think always keep in mind who's asking the question, whether it's somebody that you see at the racetrack every week or whether they come in two or three times a year. Know that they already have something in their head. There's a reason they ask that question. They're trying, they already have an idea what their story is gonna be about. So when you hear their question, think about where are they going with this? Are they gonna put me in a bad spot? Your answer, whether it directly answers their question or not, you're in control of what, what the words are that come out of your mouth. They may, they may say, what's the weather look like outside? I'm like, I don't know, I like orange a little bit better than I like yellow. It's your answer. They can't stop that. Yeah. So you, you are always in control of your answer and what you say. But just always think about who it is, what angle they work in there. And remember that they're, we're, all doing, we're all there doing the same thing. We're all there working, we're all, they all have jobs. They gotta do their job too. Sometimes they're gonna ask you a tough question you don't like. And then there's times they might ask you a stupid question. But I think the biggest thing is knowing who's asking that question. You work with these guys enough, you learn who isn't yeah, going to back you in a legit, corner. Yeah. You know which people are going to be edgy. And so it's just the biggest thing is, I think, stems around first who's asking the questions. Well, first off, I appreciate all the advice. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be busting people's ass in interviews, but I do think that I can show <laughs> a little more personality sometimes. But uh, I feel like, I've always, throughout my career, taken things very serious a lot of the time, and I could probably lighten up a little bit and show a little more of my personality sometimes in interviews. So I feel like I definitely need to uh, to do a little bit more of that. So it was it was cool to watch some of these back. It's been a couple of years since I've watched some of them, but see kind of that personality that everybody knows you for, and see how you're no different, you know, sitting here without a camera on as you are, uh, obviously with the camera on. So I feel like that goes a long way. You'll be fine. You do great. 